the San Juan Mountains probably have 15,000 or so abandoned mines. There's about 25,000 in the state of Colorado and 200,000 in the western U.S. All of the mines here are legacy mine sites. There's no real active mining in our county. We have several hundred of them that are abandoned and in need of cleanup. For the past 25 or 30 years, there's been efforts to clean up these mines, uh, but there's a lot of them and uh, it takes a lot of funding. So now we have a lot more involvement um, from the US EPA and the other federal land agencies, the BLM and the Forest Service are all working together to clean up um, the highest priority sites in this watershed. More recently in the last few years, with the greater emphasis on mine cleanup, specifically here in Silverton in the Upper Animus watershed, there's been a collective interest in understanding how supporting and increasing beaver habitat and populations within this watershed could potentially improve the overall watershed health, but also maybe it help address um, cleaning up some of these legacy mines. If we think about the landscape of Western North America, the Western US, Prior to European arrival and expansion, beaver populations were numbered in the hundreds of millions. From about 1800 through 1830 or 40, the populations went down to 10,000 to 100,000. By removing those beavers off the landscape, we changed the whole structure and function of these watersheds. Beavers are often considered a keystone species, a species that creates an ecosystem for other species, plants and animals to live in. And in particular, here in Colorado, they say between 70 and 90 percent of all wildlife requires either access to a river or a wetland or a riparian system near water. And so they attract and increase the biodiversity of wildlife coming into those areas, which is really important to the overall ecosystem health here. Beavers build dams along tributary creeks or on the sides of these river systems. And by slowing the water down in some of these tributary headwater areas, it helps to settle out excess sediments and um, suspended materials that are in the water. So it kind of acts as a natural settling or filtration system. When that water sits in the wetlands and the ponds associated with the beaver habitat, and that water soaks into the ground and moves through the ground towards the river, it also is naturally cleaned. With changing climate and warmer conditions, we've seen smaller snowpack here and less runoff each year. And as a result, some of our rivers are, getting, are drying out and shrinking in the late summer and fall. And we believe that by increasing the beaver habitat uh, in these headwaters, we can capture the snow melt over a longer period of time in the summer and slowly release it to the rivers. So by late summer, there's more water in the rivers um, than there may be now. The benefit specifically to mining um, that is of interest is uh, in these headwater areas, we have all these abandoned mines. Many of them have been left for 50, 60 or more years. As a result, they are in various states of deterioration or collapse. And so many of these mine entrances have collapsed and the water draining out of the mines um, can back up behind those. And at unknown times, that water can naturally release from the mine tunnels um, and can carry a lot of discolored and metal-laden waters rapidly into the rivers. And with more wetlands and beaver ecosystems in the system, there's a greater chance that an event like that, an unplanned event that can happen naturally at any time, is able to be captured in these, in these pond systems and settled out before it reaches the river and travels long distances downstream. We've used engineering as we've settled, say, the western U.S. Engineering's been a huge part of how we manage our water. We've been building dams and reservoirs and hydropower and bridges and infrastructure, um, you know, for many decades. And when you take a step back, you realize that beavers are nature's engineer. They know how to 
slow water down, dam it up, pond it, move it in different directions, redirect it, um, control its rates. And I think there's a lot to be learned from nature's engineers in terms of how uh, we should be thinking about our interaction with the natural environment and say controlling things such as water resources.